the liquid fluoride molten salt thorium reactor or lifter. So recently, one of my podcast listeners in the live chat section asked me for my opinion on this, and I've occasionally talked about lifter technology in the past, but as you guys know, I've lived here in the DC metro area for a while, and I've also worked in the energy industry, although as an oil analyst, but I do study the other oil and energy technologies. I've read a bunch of oil articles. I've interviewed a bunch of different oil, um, a bunch of different energy analysts who, besides covering oil and natural gas, also look at other viable energy technologies. And the lifter technology is actually one of the most very promising energy technologies that has the potential over the next 10, 15, 20 years if things were being done correctly to actually make a difference in electricity generation in the United States. Um, If you do want to study the technology more, there is at least five different TED Talks on it from Kirk Sorensen and others. So you can just go to the TED Talk website or go to the TED Talk YouTube channel and look up LFTR. Or you can go look up on the YouTube or the or just on a search engine the Thorium Remix. So there's a bunch of this, but there's a lot of very smart people who have science backgrounds, who have worked in the energy industry, who think that Lifter is extremely promising. Lifter was so promising, in fact, that in the 1960s, I'm just going to go from Wikipedia really quick, that there was um, Alvin Weinberg, I believe, he was the founder of nuclear power plants and he invented the pressurized light water reactor which was the first and second generations of nuclear power plants and he actually thought that the liquid fluoride molten salt thorium reactor would be by far a better innovation and thorium is actually extremely abundant it's en- very energy dense and thorium is so abundant that it in the earth's crust I believe it is almost as abundant as lead and more abundant than tin. So the U.S. already has a massive stockpile of thorium that's just sitting around. Now, thorium is radioactive. However, it is not, you cannot create fission with it. So it does not fizzle on its own. But under the right circumstances, which is high temperatures, um, Kirk Sorensen actually of Flybe Energy, and he's one of the foremost American experts of a lifter and unfortunately you know it seems that the I'll talk about this in a little bit but it seems that the people in power through corruption and bureaucracy and other nonsense that lifter in the United States is just never going to happen okay so I've spoken off the record with a number of different people in the nuclear power industry as well as a former Department of Energy employee that was that quit after the corruption and being disgruntled. And so they didn't give me permission to use their names, but um, this is over the last, I don't know, many years, but over the last couple of years, I've spoken to more people about Lifter, asking them about it. But the Department of Energy employee, I spoke to the former one years ago, and they just quit because of the corruption. And basically inside the Department of Energy, they have decided that no matter what, they will not allow Lifter to be researched, to be tested, and to be commercially viable here in the United States. And they have blocked it in a bunch of different ways. So just to get like a testing plant done here in the United States, there's an enormous bureaucratic permitting process through the Department of Energy and other nuclear agencies. And it takes over 10 years and over $20 million. So the average entrepreneur or venture capitalist is not going to want to wait over 10 years and over $20 million just for the potential, even though I think decades from now, potentially, Lifter, because Lifter has the potential to drastically reduce the cost of nuclear power, make it more efficient and a lot safer. And these Lifter plant designs are far more efficient than anything Bill Gates has proposed and the current nuclear power plants. The current nuclear power plants, first of all, the nuclear waste has to be stored for many thousands of years and it's still radioactive, but they are extremely costly. There's always cost overruns. There's always the possibility of a Chernobyl or Three Mile Island or Fukushima. And there's a ton more safety features inside a lifter power plant. 
okay? So you're not using pressurized, you're not having to make everything pressurized. There's, you don't have to build a containment dome. Basically, for the economics of building, um, once lifter is proven, and there are bugs to work out with lifter, I don't want to go into all the specifics, so I will attach articles for you to do more research if you want to take a look at this. Some of the Wikipedia stuff I don't fully agree with in there, but it's somewhat balanced. So it's talking about the different countries that are actually researching this. There are some private companies in other countries, but I'm telling you based on the the sources I've spoken to here in the United States that the Department of Energy will never allow Lifter. So there was a large utility company that owned nuclear power plants and they were trying to get the permits to get a Lifter test plant over the last X number of years and the Department of Energy just went out of their way to block it. This is how bad things are. Meanwhile, the Department of Energy and all the corruption in there is wasting money on crony projects and, you know, negotiating side deals and unbidded contracts like Solyndra and other garbage. And it's funny because we have, you know, the the Tesla Motors people, the Tesla Bulls, the the cult of Tesla, the Tesla Lemmings, talking about this giant conspiracy, right, that is against Tesla, that like big auto, big oil, um, the Department of Energy, the federal government, the short sellers, Wall Street are all against Tesla, supposedly, right? Which is which is not true, by the way, because, you know, when Tesla was building the Roadster, they were partnering with, with automobile companies. So they, the automobile companies were helping them initially with a lot of the things. However, there actually is a conspiracy in the United States against Lifter. And based on the information I have and some of the other stories that are out there, it is very provable. Okay, so you have the military industrial complex, you have the construction companies here in the United States, whereas spending billions of dollars to build a nuclear power plant that's almost never on time and on budget, charging the taxpayer in a state or municipality billions of dollars to build a nuclear power plant versus eventually a lifter power plant once it's up and running, which can be small and more efficient, far more energy dense, it recycles. The best thing about Lifter, in my opinion, not only will potentially the cost drop from billions of dollars to build a light water pressurized nuclear facility plus the storage of the nuclear waste for thousands of years, so the cost could potentially drop once Lifter is proven and the bugs are fixed. The cost could drop more than 90% for better nuclear power. So that's one of the best things about it. Also, it would recycle nuclear waste from nuclear power plants, so those used spent fuel rods and nuclear weapons. So you could put the old you know, warheads, the old warheads that no one wants to store anymore that are dangerous, we could take the, we could take the weapon parts out of those and we could put them into, to, to fizzle the thorium without going into too much science because I'm obviously not a nuclear physicist, but it eats that stuff, and the nuclear waste, from speaking with experts on this, it's only about 200 years or less for storage of the nuclear waste, and eventually that waste is then not radioactive anymore. So the technology, this technology, and what really pisses me off too is that the Department of Energy in the 60s actually spent a lot of time and money trying to you know, build and commercialize a lifter test reactor. They wanted to put it, I think, in a nuclear submarine first or on an airplane for military purposes. But they gave away all the intellectual property to the Chinese for free. And now the Chinese have almost a thousand PhD scientists and hundreds of millions of dollars in budget working on commercializing this technology. So really, really ridiculous. You know, this, this is a technology that should be getting the research and development and the investing dollars. Meanwhile, a bunch of other stuff that, uh, that whatever pet project people at the Department of Energy are spending money on, whether it's Bill Gates' is ridiculous because he's lobbying or bribing or unbidded contracts or whatever, or all these other ones. I think the proposal for Bill Gates' nuclear, his version of the new type of next generation nuclear power plant, maybe the plans changed. But after like 80 to 100 years, that power plant had to be buried. Okay, like this thing, this thing had no safety features, no safety features, no plans for the storage of the waste, whereas Lifter uh, recycles the waste from old nuclear power plants and nuclear warheads.
So it's it's just a very sad situation. Um, in 2013, and this is really cool, but I'm sure the cost of this is too expensive. Cadillac built a thorium concept car, a luxury car, a luxury sports car, and they said that it would need refueling once a century. So it was just a concept car. Most of the time, concept cars are never built commercially because they're too expensive or there's too many other problems, but they built a thorium engine car and they said it could run without refueling for 100 years. So I don't plan on doing a super long live stream. I don't really want to talk about markets today or the inverted yield curve. Maybe I'll do that another day. But I just wanted to, since I have somewhat of a platform here still, although my audience is a lot smaller than it used to be, YouTube has censored everything from 7,000 views or more per video down to barely 1,000, that, you know, I just want to put it out there that we should, as Americans, we should tell our congressmen to put pressure on funding for Lifter. Okay, so money is, m money is going into l a lot worse or less viable energy projects than liquid fl fluoride molten salt thorium reactor. And there's a lot of technology people that think that this, all the problems, so there are some issues with this that will eventually get solved pretty quickly, probably 10, 15 years. And then once those issues are solved, we can just go start cranking. We can just build a manufacturing facility and crank out like 80 million to $100 million nuclear uh, lifter plants and put them in cities. The Cadillac car was bad science. Well, the car did run, so I don't know anything more about that. The military industrial complex is a major reason why Lifter has not gotten more funding and has been blocked. But from what my sources have told me, the Department of Energy has intentionally gone out of its way due to sabotage and corruption. And the other thing is from speaking to a New, um, a nuclear engineer who worked, who has worked at nuclear power plants. I had an hour long conversation with this guy, uh, not too long after Fukushima. And he told me he was in the industry. I met him at a party and he said that he had found new, uh, lifter on his own and that he was shocked to learn about all the potential it had. And it's not in any textbook. So basically Lifter has not been in any textbooks for over 60 years. So the, it's been completely removed from textbooks. It's kind of in the same conspiracy theory situation as the Austrian School of Economics, because the Austrian School of Economics is not even, there's not even any Austrian books in any libraries. So if you go to a university library, like an MBA program, most of them, now there's some Schools like maybe George Mason or Texas Tech, there's a few here or there. Hillsdale College, there's a couple. But the majority of university libraries and business schools and economics departments have not a single Austrian School Economics books book. It has been intentionally buried. And Lifter is in the same boat. So there are there's um there's Thor Energy, I believe, in Norway. India's government is working on a research project. Let me look at Wikipedia for all the other places. So Japan is looking into something, and there are some private, some private small ones, uh, small companies in Czech, Canadian, Australian, and the UK. But basically, this is a technology that was invented here in the United States. It's something that we could, it would solve a lot of the world's problems, especially for energy density. Thorium is abundant. It recycles a lot of bad things. And unfortunately, because a lot of things are broken inside the federal government and you have the military industrial complex, you have, you know, these construction companies that were charging the taxpayer billions of dollars. They don't want that gravy train going away. So I wish things were different. I wish Lifter would actually get funding. But from the sources I've spoken to, and I've spoken to three very good sources in the Nuclear Power and Department of Energy over the years, and this is off the record, so I'm not using any of their names, but there's zero chance that Lifter, th things would have to totally change. And I've heard stories of where a 
utility, like I said, a large utility that you guys would know, I won't name the name, but there's a large utility that you guys would know that operates a bunch of nuclear power plants and there's a, only a handful of them and they wanted to build a lifter test reactor. And they tried to go through the Department of Energy to get the permits and all this and they were denied. Okay, so this is a new normal now here in the United States. And this is what happened, unfortunately, towards the end of the British Empire and towards the end of the Roman Empire, where you have useful innovations and, and the corruption and bureaucracy and status quo that is making profits and their parasites and rent-seeking do not want these disruptive innovations. So without, without going into too much more detail, I'll just attach the articles if you want to start reading up on Lifter. But I recommend that you listen to the TED Talks. There's over five of them over the years from Kirk Sorensen and others. Chris Martinson has also interviewed Kirk Sorensen about once a year. He's I don't think he's optimistic about how things... He agrees with me. I spoke to other sources, uh, so I'm not citing him, but... He basically the same thing from what he says. He's not optimistic that the U.S. is going to be able to do this first. That he thinks that basically the U.S. stupidly gave away all this intellectual property that the U.S. spent a lot of money in the past on research and development to the Chinese and the Chinese may end up commercializing this over the next 10, 15, 20 years and then the Chinese are going to have a trillion dollar industry and, being, and selling everyone efficient, cheap, affordable nuclear power plants. So I encourage you, Lifter's not perfect. There are things that have to get solved first, but it has, out of pretty much anything, there are some people out there, some Wall Street guys and some former physicists that are throwing money at some fusion projects, and they're, they're saying with a straight face that in 15 or 20 years, they think that there will be commercially viable fusion. I'm not so sure. I'm far more confident on Lifter, though. But unfortunately, here in the United States, it looks like there's zero chance, unless things drastically changed. And so that would involve maybe what you can do on Main Street is write to your congressman and tell your congressman that, you know, if we do want to have better energy here in the United States that's more affordable and reliable supply and that recycles things better, that we should send them research, send your congressman or senator research on Lifter. And then maybe they will put some pressure on the Department of Energy because until enough people realize what's happening, I don't think anything's going to change. Okay, well, that's it for this short little video. I'm not really sure. Like in the questions and answers, I just don't have, maybe I should interview a thorium expert, a lifter expert like Kirk Sorensen soon, but I just don't have the expertise to answer all your technical questions. So this live stream video is not a market, uh, not really a market analysis based video. I just wanted to put it out there about lifter and I'm just so frustrated because this thing deserves... There's so many things right now that are getting money thrown at it that do not deserve a single dollar thrown at it. Look at all the stupid studies that Ron, excuse me, that Rand Paul has highlighted in his Festivus list of grievances, all the dumb government studies. And if you added those up and instead of those dumb studies that are getting money, if Lifter got the money and the Department of Energy wasn't intentionally sabotaging and blocking it, and if Lifter wasn't removed from the textbook so people wouldn't have to go on the internet, like nu even nuclear... Even nuclear engineers and nuclear physicists don't even learn about this stuff in school. They have to go on the internet and look for it. That's how ridiculous things are. It's going to take decades, many years probably, potentially decades for that to change. So that money, which is being wasted on really dumb stuff, you know, all these stupid studies. There's tons of stupid studies that Rand Paul highlights that that money could have been spent a lot better. And it could have made the world better too, especially because it recycles nuclear weapons and nuclear waste. And that's a big, big problem we have that no one really counts for. So when people say that the true cost of a nuclear power plant, all those cost figures about the billions of dollars that the taxpayers um, covering for their nuclear power plant, almost none of those figures really cover the waste. Okay, well, I'll get off my soapbox for now. Everyone have a good weekend. Bye.